gonna do is we're gonna take a piece of white tissue. Um, I like the crack tissue, it's called non-bleeding tissue. Um, there's another technique with that that I can show you, but I don't have it here, so I'll just have to tease you. But with this white um, tissue, we are going to make our own background with our stamps, because why not? We have them all, so we may as well use them. So I'm using Isabelle's number eight background ticket, and I have no idea. I'm usually much more original. I don't even know why I named it number eight. Is there a number eight in here? Probably. I was probably tired that day. And this is an amazing background to use on your canvas. So I'm going to just show you just to fill up space. We're going to take this. I never mount the big stamps because I like to use them all floppy. Floppy. So I'm just going to ink it. And if we don't get the whole thing, oh well, that's part of the deal. Okay, so that's our background. And then we're going to, maybe I'll do another little texture. I'm gonna take her mesh, her mini mesh, just stamp it in the ink pad and just press here, Ooh, I like that. Press, oh, that press. Nice. And you just get exactly, what I like about these stamps is that it's not a perfect shape, so it'll never look like a beginning or an end or that you're adding to it. And also I just really just manipulate it this way. We'll make it a little busy just so I can incorporate. Then maybe I'll use, uh, let's see what else I have here. Oh, bubble wrap. Ooh. We'll do a little bubble wrap. This one, this image is from actual bubble wrap that Isabel used and scanned. And I really, I think she showed me a few samples of the bubble wrap, but this was the perfect bubble wrap ever. So. That's it, so that's your background. So you already have the texture, you're already not facing the uh, blank page again, and you'll see how seamlessly it melds into your canvas. So again, you can, maybe I'll use it on here. Let's just see something. Okay, so now I just wanna show you the difference between these two. This one was gessoed and this one's natural. Usually the, um, canvases that you buy are primed or pre-gessoed. So I'm gonna just pretend we're gonna use this one. I don't wanna use the natural one. I like it primed. So, again, it's not 100% dry. Try to dry it in between. also came out with a tissue paper that was just a phone call for me um, and it's amazing because it's already full so you could just take a portion of this and glue it to your canvas and then start again over it so that's just one sample so now I dried this kind of and um, I'm just gonna show you what we could do on top of it I'm just gonna do a quick a quick thing and of course we're gonna use a little bit of pink oh, look at that oh zoom in on that I want to eat that. this don't move it around. If it doesn't <laughs> move, I'll eat it. Um, okay, so we're just gonna take a little bit and just cover. Now you see it's a sheer, it's semi-gloss and it's a sheer color. And it's so pretty. We're just gonna do a little bit. And I use the Claudine Helmuth paint brushes too, which I love, because it's the perfect assortment of brush. Look at that. Ugh, look, look, <laughs> yum. Okay. Now if you want to push your color a little bit more, you can take a little spritzy bottle, this mini mister, 
and spray it. Because acrylic dries so fast, you got to catch it before it dries. And you can just make it move a bit. And I should have had them touch so you could see them. You can see it mix. So that creates a wash, so it's more sheer. You see this is on pure concentrate and here it's the wash. So you'll see different textures. And then we'll just add, um, oh, now you have to see all three. Like these are really edible, it's not fair that it's poisonous. Okay, so we are going to paint these three on. And I really don't care. I just like the motion of painting. Again, if you don't like it, you can cover it up. Just do this motion, relax, and let yourself go. And you can always do more with it after, but I kind of like how this looks. So I'm going to spritzy spritzy it. And we could do a little drippage here. It should drip a bit. Drip! There we go. So that can create just a little bit more movement and texture. And we can kind of dry it if we put a napkin over and just lift. I really like how that looks. So that's just the beginning. That's a first layer and we are going to be adding more. Now again, I just want to show you on, just to see, show you what you can do with the napkin since this one, ha I have to dry this a little bit. So I'm going to use my gesso just a little bit and some people use it just to block certain areas. So if I don't want to see um, some of this, I am just going to do a little bit of, and I always wondered like people who take the painstakingly place their first layer and then just erase the whole thing with gesso, but I kind of get it now. I'm just going to leave a little bit. And I might even, now that I covered the whole thing, I'm just going to remove, just so you see a little bit of a shadow of, and again, we don't want the napkin really to show. I mean, we can highlight it, but I just wanted to show you how to get rid of that intimidating empty canvas look. Maybe if I use a little bit of my spritzy spritz. Oh yeah, this is working. Okay, I'm gonna leave it be, and I'm gonna start painting over it. I would let leave a little time. Every time you place a layer, I would just, like, just pretend that I'm, every time you place a layer, you basically wanna set it so it doesn't modify. Yes, that is a word, between different colors and different layers. So again, I see the little musical instruments. It's fun when it pokes through a bit. And as it dries, it actually becomes more sheer. And some people will look at this and go, ew, this is really gross and yucky, but I can't tell you how amazing this process is. Like I do this in my art journals, I do this on canvases, and it's just the motion of painting and freedom and not having rules because I'm really not such a rule follower. I know it's hard to believe too. I don't iron and I don't follow rules. Okay, dry enough. So now I'm going to just add, again, I really like, oh, look, look, look. Oh, there's Frankie. So in the middle of the day, once in a while, you'll hear, Frankie, where are you? Where are you? Oh, there you are. And then we're okay again we can move on now that we know where he is. And he probably had free reign of the whole store, and who knows where he did his business, because you all have to know that. And again, I'm just going to do a little bit here. I'll add. And again, you can use any color combo you want. I was kind of in the mood for these three. And I'm going to leave these without the pool of water. And you'll see also by putting the um, gesso underneath, it kind of lightened the color. So it makes more pastel, more of a pastel-y look. 
And I'm going to leave this a little bit open. Okay, so now that this has dried, I'm going to add a little texture to it. Although it still has the crumply part, which I love, I'm still going to add a little bit more as our next layer. And it's all about the layering. That's what makes this fun. And again, I use my stays on because I'm layering. Can I use the word layering one more time? Layer, layer, layer. And then you'll just see it just adds a little bit of oomph to the canvas. And again, this canvas seeps in the middle, which I can't stand. So you'll have better canvases at home. The pre-primed, stretched, that's what you need. And are you talking about me back there? I'm just kidding. Okay, so that's it for that. And again, I'm going to doesn't even need to be heat set, it's fine. And now I'm going to see, now look at the difference. This was a wash that I did, and this was coloring pure over gesso, so it has that pastel -y look, and this does not. So with the same paint, you can get a multitude of different looks, okay? So now I'm just gonna show you one more step, and I'm not gonna even complete these because I want you to complete your own. I'm just going to give you the tools and ideas.